All right, if you're like me, you've had websites for a while, and one of the things that happens is the links start to stagnate. Some of your links don't work. Maybe you change servers or have done things to your server. I just recently had that happen, and it reminded me of this problem. So I shot this little video that's going to show you an easy way to find these links that are not working. Then you can either change them, remove them, or forward them to a working link. You can check on both internal and external links because your external links are important as well. In my case, I transferred a blog to a new host, and the server name was different on the two servers. The new server on the host was myuli.com, and all the links had myuli.com slash John Griffin slash instead of johngriffin.com as the beginning of the URL. The plugin that was supposed to transfer the website kind of screwed that up. So, all of these links had some funny looking names with another weird name, and I'll show you an example of that in the video so I didn't fix them all yet. You may also have external links where you're linking to another site. Let's say the original post is five years old. Uh, maybe the website you're linking to is out of business, or the site is gone, or the page changed. What should you do? Well, the first step is to find those links, and this program works for both internal and external links. I'm using a program called Xenu Link Sleuth, and below this post, I'll have a link to where you can download it. It's free. So, to run the program, you just open it up, and it's usually at the bottom down here, Xenu Link Sleuth. Hit Xenu. You'll get a basic window. Go to the file, check URL, and click on that. So all you need to do is type in the URL to your website. It does keep track of ones you had before, so you can see some of the sites I changed, but we'll just do this one. There's the option to check external links. This will slow the program down, but I'll show it to you anyway so you can see it. You can also include or exclude URLs. This can come in handy if you have a certain URL that you don't want to check or, you know, a group maybe admin or something. I generally leave everything alone unless I'm searching for something very specific. There's also some advanced options. You can say how many threads are running. You can adjust how your reports are going to show up. Like I say, I leave everything pretty much the way it is. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and go ahead and hit OK. So this is going to take a while to run, so I'll come back when it's done. You'll notice that the threads are down at the bottom. You can also see how many URLs there are. That'll change as it discovers more. But it says we're about 33% done, now 29. So don't worry about that. It's going to take, I know, on this site about three and a half minutes. But I just want you to notice you can look down there and, and see how things are running. And if you want to do stuff in the background, you can do that as well. All right, we're done now. You can see that it pops up with a box that says Link Sleuth Finished. Do you want to report? I'll click that in a second, but I want to bring your attention down here. You'll notice it says 1,272 URLs. So that's a far cry from what it started from, as well as taking 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So depending on the speed of your web server and how many threads you've got, it could take a while. I don't bother with the reporting because it does a you know an HTML report. I don't really want to open my browser. I'd just as soon look at it here. But okay, assuming you hit no, you're going to just be brought back right here, and this is giving you your basic screen. You All right, so basically what you're going to see is your address, which tells you what web page that they were checking, whether it's an internal or an external page, what the status is, and we'll deal with that in a minute what the type was, whether it's HTML, CSS, some kind of application, the size, the title if it's a web page or if they can extract a title out of it. Uh, the date doesn't really matter. I believe that's when it was checked. And that's what it looks like. Yep, so that doesn't matter. Level is how deep from the home page. So you can see here's the home page is level zero. I don't have a deep uh, structure. I pretty much have one or two levels. Tells you how many outbound links are on the page and inbound links and don't think this is a find out how many incoming links there are it's it's not don't use it like that it tells you what server there is this one tells you it's coming from Amazon so that's obviously some kind of uh, theme or a, a download or something like I said any errors here that don't show up the duration is how long it took to get the page so that can give you a little bit of a uh, head start on seeing what your server's reacting like. 
What the character set is, most of the time you won't care about that, but it could come in handy if you find a page that's displaying weird. And a description if there is one. So you can get a little bit of information without looking at your analytics account all the time. But the main thing you're going to want to use it for is to go and find the status. So you'll notice these all highlight. That's because they're sortable. So let's hit status, and that's now sorting reverse. So it's going to go by errors, not OK. Don't worry about it in Wikipedia. Most of the forbidden request just means that these sites don't accept the robot, which went out and checked them. Lexcycle.com, no connection. You might want to check. You know, there's obviously a link somewhere. Uh, no object data is obviously a problem somewhere. No such host. There's a, a bad link, and I can see already that the address is John Griffin, not JohnGriffin.com. So let's start that one. What I usually do is just go on here, right click on the link, and it says URL properties, and it shows you the title. No links are on the page, but one page links to this, and that's where your error is. So it's JohnGriffin.com slash articles slash action enforcer dash supercharge. So I could go to that page and either fix the HTML through the visual editor if it's on WordPress or the, the straight HTML page, whatever you use, I'll leave that up to you to, to figure out. But that would be an easy one. All you have to do is basically pre, uh, add dot com to John Griffin it would fix it so let's look at another one here so here's one where it's linking to my university site and for some reason they changed the name so on my about page I'm pointing to my departments for the hotel college and that got changed so I know I can change that one back out and these Amazon content things you can look at a little later these are mainly uh, pictures that are for some reason not there anymore so we can look and see what URL it's pointing to so there's a gallery plugin that's missing some stuff worth checking on uh, the archives seem to be missing some things but here's what's really interesting and what I was telling you about see we have myuli.com slash John Griffin slash attachment or John Griffin that's an image so we won't bother with that but it's worth fixing let's go to this one here. This articles is obviously linking back so we'll hit the properties. So marketing calendar is linked to this bye bye Google article and you can see myuli.com needs to be taken out and johngriffin.com put in and that's the easy way to fix that. So that's the main reason I use this. You can go through and fix all these. It takes a little time. Have a somebody else do it if you have a staff but That'll help you because then Google will start indexing pages again that have bad links and you may be linking inside like I am here to other articles and you want to make sure that they're not a bunch of 404 errors that say can't find it. So hope that helps.